Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a very large storm that'll be impacting the United States over the next couple of days, bringing an increased risk for severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. We'll also be breaking down a massive heat wave and a massive flooding concern that'll be impacting parts of the United States. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast, but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. Well, first we get with the eastern half of the United States, which is where you might notice there is a lot of convection this afternoon. We have a massive area of showers and storms spanning from the northeast in Canada all the way back through areas in Florida. And this doesn't just end there. We have more showers and storms and even some severe weather that is popping off across central and southern parts of the plains, which we're going to continue to see more severe weather throughout the next several hours, throughout the overnight hours, and then into tomorrow, where this severe weather will just keep continuing to march to the east where we'll see another threat for severe weather tomorrow in the eastern half of the United States. So again, it's going to be a very active next 72 hours. So make sure you stay tuned with Max Velocity. Make sure you're subscribed down below. We'll keep you posted with everything that's happening. But again, very active weather pattern right now. And what does this look like on the jet stream? I know a lot of people are wondering what is exactly happening here in the United States and why are we seeing so much rain in some areas? Why is it so warm in other areas? So for right now, this is the current jet stream in the United States. It is really defined here across really the central plains back through parts of the Ohio. Ohio Valley into Canada. That's where our jet stream's positioned. We have a low pressure system that's back up here that's pretty weak in the upper levels that's located back over into the northern Midwest, hence why we're seeing shower and storm activity across parts of the East Coast. And then further down to the south, we have a lot of warm air that's underneath that jet stream. That's very typical, by the way. And with that being said, we also have a ridge, even a heat dome in a sense, back over in the southwest United States, which is bringing really hot weather to areas like Phoenix, Arizona, which is forecasted to reach near 120 degrees over the next couple of days so very warm temperatures there but this jet stream gets a little bit worse as we go into next week it's actually going to deepen more over the next few days so we're going to see that trough dip down a bit further down to the south and east heat dome will continue across the western tier of the united states and this will actually be setting up for a very strong southerly wind out of parts of the gulf of mexico so that will bring a lot more moisture into areas like the southern plains that could actually increase the risk for some storm activity not necessarily severe weather but at least some showers and storms but much more humid air that'll equivalent to much warmer heat indices. That means the feel like temperatures will be upwards of the hundreds and maybe even the hundred and tens in those areas. So very warm weather overall. And then once we go later in the week by Wednesday into Thursday, that heat dome doesn't really move. It's going to continue to sit in the Southwest United States. Overall though, on the Eastern half of the United States, that low pressure system will race off to the North and East. It'll weaken out. So things will get a little bit drier over that direction. And eventually going into next weekend, things become more uncertain, but notice the jet stream it's weak and it just sits in the central United States. So we're going to continue to see a lot of heat and a lot of humidity across the southern tier of the United States. And you'll notice that here on the temperature anomalies. This is what helps to show us the temperatures overall in the United States. And you'll notice all that warm weather is just sitting down there all along the Gulf Coast in the southwest United States. That's where record-breaking temperatures are possible. All the way through next week, that jet stream lifts further off to the north, which will actually lead to all that warmer air also pulling off to the north. So it's all going to kind of go together with that jet stream. And the jet stream really controls a lot of our weather. That's why I mentioned it so much here in these video forecasts. And once we go into Saturday and the Sunday of next weekend, there could be some cooler weather behind maybe a trough, but this all is quite uncertain at this time. So stay tuned. We'll keep you posted with the latest on that. But again, a bit more uncertainty with that as of right now. Before I show you the detailed breakdown of the severe weather over the next few days, I did want to mention that there's going to be a lot of humidity in the United States. And the higher the number is, that means it's going to be a lot more humid. And all the humid air as of right now is sitting basically in the southeast United States, the southern plains, the Ohio Valley, and as well as the northeast. And notice as we go into the next week all that humidity is really just sitting down here it starts to pull further up to the north though i mentioned this before high pressure system is located back over in the southwest united states strong southerly pull will let and let basically all this moisture go off to the north into the central plains. so you'll see dew points into the 70s in areas like kansas nebraska iowa it's going to get very humid by midweek and then as we get closer to the weekend that humidity lifts further off to the north and east you'll notice dew points into the 70s for areas like the ohio valley in the midwest and high Higher humidity does usually lead to higher feel like temperatures, so it's going to feel a lot warmer there as we go into next weekend. So be prepared for that as we get closer to the mid part of July. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next several days. We'll actually begin with tonight's severe weather, even though it's already ongoing. It's going to actually continue for the next several hours and into the overnight hours. So as of right now, there's a slight risk of severe weather from the high plains back into areas like the southeast United States near Mississippi and as well as Tennessee. Main concern right now is damaging winds and as well as the threat 
for large hail, but that large hail threat is really focused across the high plains. So that's only for the next few hours. By the time you watch this forecast, that threat might already be dwindling down. Tornado risk as well, same thing. It's back over in the high plains, maybe an isolated chance for a tornado tonight, but the threat again is low. Let's talk about the timing because it gets pretty interesting as we go into the overnight hours. So closer to around six, seven o'clock tonight, storms are going to be rolling into areas like Kansas, the Oklahoma Panhandle, and the Texas Panhandle. You might be thinking initially, this doesn't look too concerning. Well, this activity is actually going to become a bit more organized, and that could lead to a bit more of a damaging wind potential going into the overnight hours across areas like Oklahoma and even parts of Texas. So once we get closer around 10 to 11 o'clock, we have some storms rolling through areas in Oklahoma, as well as the Texas Panhandle and Southern Kansas, and eventually going closer to just after midnight, we have a lot of storm activity rolling through areas in Oklahoma. So damaging winds is the main concern out of this, and it'll con continue to collapse down to the south and east, and as that happens, we'll continue to see some damaging wind potential up to about 70 miles per hour. So make sure you protect loose lawn items and hatch down any trampolines. There is a low risk of flying trampolines tonight. It's not really that high today, but there will be a chance for at least a couple of flying trampolines out of this cluster of storms. Once we go closer to tomorrow morning, storms are still continuing down into Arkansas and North Texas, where there will be some storm activity still producing maybe some damaging winds and sporadic hail. And then eventually that will lead to our next threat of severe weather, which extends from Texas and Oklahoma all the way back through the southeast United States and another area to watch for for severe weather that's along the east coast. So for those back over in the mid-Atlantic and the northeast, be mindful, more severe weather possible tomorrow. Main concern right now is damaging winds up to about 70 miles per hour. There also could be a low-end tornado risk. I'm not too concerned about this, but there will probably at least be a couple of isolated tornadoes as we head into tomorrow. Main concern for that risk is going to be across areas in the northeast and mid-Atlantic. There's a low chance as well back down in the southern plains. And look at this back up in Minnesota, another low risk for an isolated tornado. So I have a tornado action plan in place for tomorrow. But again, the risk overall currently is low. Here's the timing for tomorrow. So again, all this will really start in the morning hours. We're going to still see storms over in Oklahoma and Texas. That'll be the overnight threat. Once we go into tomorrow, though, some storms will be rolling through areas like Mississippi, Louisiana, and Arkansas. These will be producing damaging winds and maybe a little bit of large hail. Eventually going closer to 2 to 3 o'clock, a pretty organized line of storms continues to march across the southeast United States, primarily in the Dixie Alley, and eventually going closer around 6, 7 o'clock, those storms continue to move off to the east, and eventually going into the late evening, all that storm activity will start to fizzle out. We'll still see some thunderstorms, but lightning is really going to be the main concern with maybe some gusty winds, but really the damaging wind, large hail, and tornado risk all subsides after sunset. For those over in the mid-Atlantic and northeast, storm activity will really ramp up around lunchtime. You'll notice a massive area of storms extending from North Carolina back through New York, and as a reminder, the main concern out of these is damaging winds with perhaps an isolated tornado and maybe a little bit of isolated large hail as well. By 3 o'clock or so, those storms are approaching the east coast, so along the coastline near New Jersey and through North Carolina. These will still be producing some lightning, damaging winds, maybe again some large hail, and eventually going closer to 6 to 7 o'clock. Those storms really weaken out quite quickly, and in New England, we're not really expecting a whole lot of severe weather there, unless you're on the western half there of the New England region. Now, going into Monday, we do have a pretty large area of a severe weather potential. Now, everything is overall low, but notice how large this area is. We have another area in the northeast. We have an area down in the southeast United States, a massive area back through the Midwest, the northwest United States, and into areas like the central and southern plains. It's huge for Monday, but overall, the risk of severe weather is low right now. Damaging winds, large hail, the main concern for really all these areas, maybe an isolated brief tornado. And before we go, going into Monday, there's also a moderate risk of excessive rainfall across the northeast. This includes New Hampshire, Vermont, and Massachusetts. Make sure you're being very weather aware on Monday if you're in the northeast, where rainfall totals could get as high as two to four inches, maybe isolated spots up to five inches of rain. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.